QuickBooks 1B, setting up a business, QuickBooks Online. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, the email, the website, and we're teaching the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, live online, and the Twitter account. We had left off on the last conversation on the company screen, and I wanted to talk about chart of accounts for QuickBooks. So, here's my company, Sturdy Blue Jeans. Here's the main screen right here, and I'm going to go to Company Chart of Accounts. Accounts define chart of accounts as every account you have in the business and its balance. So, you can see I've got show account numbers checked because later on I will use account numbers in my business. Um, you'll notice the name of the account on the left, the type of the account on the right, in the middle, excuse me, and the balance on the right. Now, you'll see that they group by assets, equity. We don't. If we had a liability account, it would probably be in this section too. And then we have a whole bunch of income accounts, and a whole bunch of expense accounts, starting with cost of sales, and then more expense accounts. That is the typical way a chart of accounts is organized. By that I mean you're going to start off with asset accounts, then liabilities, there's none here, equity, which are the balance sheet items. Then you skip to the, the income statement, starting with income, and then going to expenses at the bottom. Now, you'll notice that I don't have a cash account. I don't have a cash account. So I'm going to hit new. And I get a little window that asks me what type of account I'd like to set up. I'm going to say choose from all account types and hit next. And I'm going to set up a bank account, and I'm going to hit Next. And I'm just going to have a checking account. I'm going to hit Next. We're going to call it Checking. I don't really need a number. It's not a sub-account, which means one account is a sub-account of another. So, for example, under Liabilities, you could have sub-accounts for other liability accounts underneath to make things more specific. I'm just going to put a description as checking account. It's got a zero balance right now as of, and it's going to pull up a calendar today, and I'm going to hit finish. You have specified an opening balance date that occurs before the closing date. Are you sure you want to save? I'm going to hit yes. And what you'll see on here is that I've created an account called checking. It's a bank account, which is grouped with the other asset accounts, and it has a zero balance. So we've op we set up an account, and we can set up other accounts as we go, too. What I'm going to do as a first transaction is, I'm going to contribute cash to my business and debit checking to increase it. And I also need to create an, an equipment account because I'm also going to, for my sturdy uh, gene example, I'm going to assume that I contribute equipment into the business as well as cash. So let's go back. And we're going to go into the screen that allows us to create Accounts, choose from all income types, next. I'm going to create a fixed asset account, next. I'm going to call it machinery and equipment, next. There it is, machinery and equipment. And I'm going to hit next because the name of the account is self-explanatory. And I'm just going to finish. And you'll see that I have, under fixed asset, a new account called fixed assets. And you'll see also that there is an account called 
depreciation, which is the decline in value of a tangible asset like equipment, and the original cost. So it will store both of those things for me. So what we just did was we went to chart of accounts and we created two new accounts. What I can also do is go to the sales tax. Well, before I do that, I'm going to go to preferences because there's a long discussion that we kind of have to have on preferences. Big long list, which really saves a lot of time and decisions in QuickBooks. You can see how far this scroll bar goes down to give you some idea of just how many decisions you end up making at the beginning here. So I called my company Sturdy Blue Jeans. I gave it an address. Let's scroll down some more. The first month of income is the first month of my fiscal year. There's only one owner. It'll be a sole proprietor. I check closing the books so that the system will force me to close out my accounting records at the end of every calendar month, which you should do. And the reason that you should do that is you don't want income statement amounts to carry over more than one month. You want to keep the income and expense on one month at a time and then close out the balances. We'll do more on that later. I'm going to include account numbers as I go and number my accounts and show them. That'll make it easier when I start making accounting entries. I'm going to have one business. I'm not going to have divisions or departments underneath it at this point. I'm going to track the quantity and the price and rate when I make transactions. And the quantity on hand, I'm going to track inventory. I'm going to have transaction numbers. Again, it's easier to find history if I number the transactions. I may have deposits from clients. I may discount on sales, both discounts I take as a vendor and discounts I offer customers. I'll give estimates. I include some documentation that I put on an estimate and that I put on an invoice. There may be shipping, so I'm going to recognize that expense. I'm going to use credits, so we're going to automatically apply credits to invoices. We're going to have an aging account to show when we do have a receivable, how old it is in terms of number of days, from 1 to 30 days all the way out to 90 days or more. So we'll be able to see that. We're going to be able to track expenses by customer. If we write a duplicate check, we're going to get a warning, which will be helpful to keep us from writing a duplicate check and creating a bank reconciliation problem. We're going to apply payments to bills automatically, saves us a step. We're going to have purchase orders that we create when we go out to buy things, and we're going to have more transaction numbers as we mentioned before. And so that are the highlights again for the, if I go to customer and I go to preferences, I'm sorry, company preferences, that sets up a bunch of assumptions which makes life easier down the road. That's as far as we'll get right now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.